the first winner we've seen tonight on our Dodge fight night. There is Monty Beetham. One more fight to go before we see Monty. His first professional fight in New Zealand. He's had two fights in his career. He's won both of them inside the distance. This is the first chance we have to see him for ourselves. That's coming soon on Dodge Fight Night, live with One Sport. The waiting continues for Monty Beetham Jr. fighting as a cruiserweight. There is Monty Beetham Sr. His dad, of course, a very handy man to have in your corner. Well, seeing Monty in the ring makes me very, very happy. Um, following my footsteps, hopefully, I'm very happy for what he's done. Look, it's great having my dad in my corner. Um, our relationship's really excelled now that he's been involved in boxing. Um, he's got a new lease of life. Um, he's got a wealth of knowledge. Um, he's been there, done it, so I've got the utmost respect for him. And he's still at that stage where he can clip me around the ears and, and tell me straight, look, you're doing this wrong, you're not doing this right, put in more effort. And uh, both him and Danny, I respect so much that uh, I really want to listen to them. I never saw him much, but he's just willing and trying to learn something. And uh, I look at him, he's got potential in him. Yes, we all got mums, and mums always have their opinions, especially on something like this, and boxing's a pretty tough sport for their um, beloved sons to be involved in. Uh, she, for a number of years, she stopped it uh, completely. She wouldn't have a bar of it. Um, now that I'm old enough and ugly enough, um, she, she's uh, well behind me and, and supporting me in, in, in this new adventure. And, uh, you know, it's great that she's there. She was there for my first fight in Samoa, and I could hear her yelling out some words of advice. And um, it's just great having my whole family there involved, my dad in my corner and my mum very close ringside. Interesting, isn't that Monty Beetham Sr. Very much, of course, in Monty Beetham Jr.'s camp. There we see them in the dressing room, just getting ready. It won't be long before we see them. Billy Graham, how good was Monty Beetham Sr.? He was a really good fighter, good boxer, hard to hit, used the whole ring. He was really, really good. And you judge a man by the men he fought. He fought some good fighters and he outboxed them. And I was there the night he won the British Empire title in Wellington Town Hall. It's a great night. And he's a good-looking guy, too. Got a great way with about him. And I love to see a father's son. You know, I think it's Well, that's great. an interesting point. Do you see anything in the sun from the father? Well, I don't know yet, because I haven't seen this guy fighting as a pro. I don't know what we're going to see. But uh, Monty Beethan, Dad, he look, he's a better-looking fella. I think he's a great-looking fella in his day. <laughs> but he's a pretty good-looking fella, too. <laughs> well, Monty Beetham will be out shortly, <laughs> and we'll see his fight. And we, in fact, we could see it pretty shortly, because our next fight features the first-round knockout specialist, Tyrone Brunson. And you'd have to imagine it's pretty hard to line up fights for this guy. He is a young American for whom boxing is the way to a better life. Boxing is a passion to me because I was bred around it. My whole life, it was either boxing, basketball, sell drugs, or be nothing. I'm not a good basketball player. I don't want to sell drugs. In boxing, something I liked it and loved to do, so I took it and ran with it. Yeah. Boxing has made me a better man because it raised me from 13 to now. I matured over the years in amateurs and in the professional game. So, yes, boxing has made me a, a better man. Brunson, very impressive looking 22 year old American and he is fighting Jamie Waru tonight. Let's bring in our commentators once again, Mike Angove and Mike Chevello. Thanks, Jeff. One I'm really looking forward to here, Tyrone Bronson, the younger by 13 years. He's also the taller by two centimetres. He weighs four kilos more than Jamie Waru. 17 pro fights to Waru's 40. The experience goes the way of Waru, but the knockouts is what everyone's looking at. Can Tyrone Bronson get that 18th KO here tonight and set and equal the world record? He's had 19 wins, 10 by 
KO, Jamie Wadu. Jamie Waru making his way to a centre ring here at the Packed Out Sky City Casino. What a big ask it is for Waru. He has the experience over Tyrone Brunson here tonight, but everybody, not only in New Zealand, but around the world, will be watching this one to see if Tyrone Brunson can KO Waru in one round and equal Edwin Valorosa's world record of 18 first round knockouts. But he'll be taking on, out of Philadelphia, just 22 years old, undefeated 17 first round KOs from 17 fights. Please welcome Tyrone Brunson! Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the USA. Tyrone Brunson makes his way to Cedric. What an exciting 22-year-old this junior middleweight, middleweight fighter is. 17 and 0, 17 knockouts, all by the way of the first round of Mike Gander. You could have loved any fighter that had put his own live-performed entrance music. Well, Tyrone Brunson is a man. He talks, he is an entertainer in the ring. I heard, Mike, you were at the press conference yesterday and really blew up between Tyrone Brunson and Jamie Waru. Well, the smack talk started as soon as they got off the scales. Jamie Waru took exception. Even his trainer, Marty Sullivan, got involved. Tyrone Brunson finished it in the ring tonight inside the first round. The question is, will he be too tense trying to go for the world record? OK, we're excited by this one. Let's go across to Oliver Driver, and we'll get started. The question is, can Tyrone Brunson equalise the world World record. If he wins in the first round here tonight, Brunson will equalise Edwin Valoros's world record for first round knockouts. You're talking about a man who has sparred with world class fighters, including Kasi Mouma, Kermit Citron, and the current world champion, Jermaine Taylor. He's only 22 years old. He's Tyrone Brunson, the young gun, they call him. But Jamie Wadu has something to prove here tonight. You don't come to New Zealand. You don't come to Auckland and talk smack to Jamie Waru. Certainly a determined look on the face, the steely eyes there of Jamie Waru. He's got the experience, he's got the age. 13 years elder of Tyrone Brunson. But can he take the Tyrone Brunson power shots that Brunson is renowned for in the first round? You can, see there, you can see there Tyrone Brunson, he's talking already. He'll tell you how he's going to finish it. He'll tell you as he's doing it. We're going to change his nickname, at... Mike. We're going to stop calling him the young Come gun on. and we'll call him the preacher. <laughs> Tyrone Brunson. Well, he's going to be the predictor here tonight if he can okay. finish it now listen in the first round. I want to clean for the talk. Protect yourselves at all times. Obey my commands at all times. When I say break, stop punching and step back. Anything here, here, I'll class as a low blow. You understand? You understand? Okay, touch gloves and good luck. It's not the first time that Tyrone Brunson has fought here in Auckland. Last time out here in Auckland, he defeated Lee Ready? Hunter. You ready? That was back okay, out of the, in out of the April. Ring. He made his debut back in out April 2005 when he knocked out Kevin Carey in yep. Philly in just one round. Bust. And funny to note that on the record of Tyrone Brunson, it says he's knocked out Kirk Douglas. The man's knocked out Spartacus, mine. Here we go. First round. And this is Brunson going oh, for the break, equal break. of the world break. record. He needs a KO in the first round. Well, wasting no time in there straight in. Powerhouse jab to the body. And he's physically the bigger man than Jamie Waru. Jamie Waru digging deep. Oh, there's the left hook. He almost puts him through the rope. Right in front of our country position. Slipped down, Jamie Wadu firing from the trenches. Wild shots. He's really open down the middle in particular. Tyrone Brunson can't afford there to let Jamie Wadu tie him up if he's going to go for the knockout. Another vicious right hand there. Just needs to give himself room to punch. Oh. Not proud himself too much. Really working there. Uppercut from Tyrone Brunson. 
Bronson, wild left hand from Bronson and a short right smack down on the kisser. He's got 1 minute 55 remaining. If he wants to equalise the world record, somebody better call Guinness because we could see history in the making. Well, Jamie Wadu, though, he's been around a long time with some big hitters and his, all he needs to do to consider himself a winner is to survive the first round, although he's really struggling there. And the thing he is doing is tying himself up, making himself a little bit more difficult to hit. Don't forget, folks, in 17 fights, Tyrone Brunson has never gone past the first round. He has knocked out all of his opponents from Philadelphia around the USA and here in Auckland. They have all fallen in the first round, courtesy of shots like that, a straight right hand to the jawline of Jamie Waru. Well, he's picking his shots a little bit more, too. He's just being a little bit clinical, not trying to rush it too much. Jamie Waru just ducking under that left hook there. Body shot from Brunson. Waru has got to get off the ropes here. Uppercut. There's a body shot. He's tagged him. He's tagged him. He's going to go downhill, Waru. Here comes Brunson. Unloading the heavy artillery. Well, the referee's hanging back there as well. No holding. 45 seconds remaining. Can he equalise the world record set by Edwin Valeros of 18 first round knockouts? Well, he's running out of time. His man is gas. His man is on rubber leg street. Tyrone still picking his shot. Good thing is he's not panicking too much. 30 seconds to go. Jamie, no The clock is ticking down here on the world record. It's the only shot he'll ever get for a Tyrone Brunson for consecutive first round knockouts. Triple jab, right hand, left hook, right again, rubber leg strip. Can you drop him? He's going for the world record. Jamie Wadu is wobbling. The referee moves in. It's all over. It's all over. He's done it. He's done it. Tyrone Brunson has equalised the world record of 18 first round knockouts. I don't want to pour rain on this parade, but the referee stopped that too early. Jamie Wadu was still there to continue. Well, he was still I have to disagree. It's pandemonium here at the Sky City Casino. Both of these corners are bickering at each other from across the ring. Jamie Waru's corner is none too happy. Tyrone Brunson equalizes the world record and have a look at that. That's the corner of Jamie Waru and they are absolutely going off. Well, Marty Sullivan there, Henry Schuster in the corner as well. Very, very unhappy. from the crowd. Tyrone Brunson will go into the record books. He has equalised Edwin Valeros's record. Ready? Someone better call Ripley's mic because not even I believe it. He has equalised the world well, record. He has Here's how it went down. the record certainly and he really was teeing off. Jamie Wadu showed a lot of courage to stay up there. He really did. He took a lot of shots throughout that fight. In the end, he was just overwhelmed. Still a question about whether the referee stepped in too early as we watch Ladies again. Jamie Wadu, his legs fight. still strong, but his body took a pounding. So Oliver Dryer just made it to the official first round TKO. And elated Tyrone Brunson grins, smiles, and still smack talks the corner of Jamie Waru. There's no need for it, really. And good sportsmanship there from Henry Schuster, just shaking the hand of Tyrone Brunson. Maybe a hollow victory in some ways for Tyrone Brunson, but no doubt, either way you cut it, he goes into the record books as having equalised that of Edwin Veloros. 18 consecutive first-round knockouts. Tyrone Brunson equalising the world record, 18 first round knockouts. Now, Billy Graham, those three minutes must have seemed like an eternity for Jamie Waru. It's a marathon when you can't box or punch. And the guy was really out of his league. He was a lot heavier, a lot taller, a lot stronger, a lot younger. Let's talk a bit about Brunson. Then. Does this record, is this something of a millstone around his neck? I mean, he's concentrating so much on the record that he's actually, he looks like he's a good boxer. He's in good shape. Yeah, he should be fighting better men. Really, what he's done is he's looked out for people he can knock over, like Tyson did with his first 10 fights and David Tua did with his first 10 fights. They look for guys that can bowl over to say that they're one-round knockouts. But in essence, he should have been there with a man that can fight, who was the same weight and the same height, and then you've got a real fight. That's how it should have been. All right, well, let's go to our winner now, and that's Tyrone Brunson. He's with Mike Ango. Well, Tyrone, you've just uh, equaled the world record. How does it feel? 18-0, 18, 18 first-round KOs. Feel good. I mean, uh, the uh, camera was slippery. He didn't drop me. 
I mean, it is what it is, though. It's boxing. Well, he certainly, all he had to do to really consider himself a winner in the fight was to stay up. He took a lot of big shots, particularly to his body. You were giving it to him, but you have to give him some credit for having the courage to stay up there. I give him all the credit in the world. The guy came to fight. He's a tough kid. He had 47 fights. He, he's a journeyman. I'm a prospect. Mate, you've, uh, you've got the record now. You've equaled the record. What next for you? Are you going to go for that 19th? Yes, uh, I'm going to do it in America, though. I know I'll go home and break it. Yeah, I love New uh, Zealand, but I'm, I'm, but I'm going home and uh, fight on ESPN in uh, August. I'm going to try to break the record soon. Well, congratulations. The equal world record holder here tonight, Tyrone Brunson. Thank you. Thank you. The end of this. Tyrone Brunson has equaled that world record that goes back over 100 years. Jamie Waru came out, he was prepared to give it a go. Here we see the final preparations now in Monty Beetham's dressing room. And reading about the way he's gone about preparing for this bout, listening to what he has to say, family has played a big part in this. That's a double-edged sword. There's plenty of support here, but there's the pressure of not wanting to let them down. For Monty Beetham, it is a special night. This is my first fight in New Zealand and I'm very excited, very nervous. Um, I, I can't wait. I mean, I'm going to have all my family there. My wife is going to make an appearance for the first time. She's not going to use a babysitter's car to, to get away from it. Uh, although I've got to make sure she doesn't rush off to the toilet when I'm fighting. Um, but seriously, it's, it's really cool. I'm going to walk out there for the ring walk and I'm going to see so many familiar faces, so much uh, people there that are supporting me and, uh, and are close to me and that are there behind me and, um, and on the journey with me. And, and that's going to be very special. I love playing league at home in front of the hometown and it's going to be no different boxing. I've always flirted with the idea of boxing um, coming through through the grades and playing rugby league, um, especially with um, Anthony Mundine changing over. Uh, but I'm really glad the way it's panned out. I've had a great career in, in league, and and now I get to change over and uh, and do something that I've got another big passion for. Um, I think uh, having watched my dad's discs and him being so well, that ignited that initial flame in me. And I'm so proud of him, and he is sort of like a mentor, and um, it would be great to emulate some of the success that uh, he has had. The waiting is almost over for Monty Beetham. Billy Graham, five minutes or so to go to the fight. What's the fighter feeling now? What's on his mind? He's singing his combinations. His coach is said to him, his father said to him, now you've got the plan, get out there and put it into place. Don't do anything stupid, just do what we plan, what we practice. He knows exactly what he's got to do. He'd be going over it in his brain, make sure I get it right. He can't wait to get in there. <laughs> and we, wish... can't, we can't wait to see him either. Monty Beaton fighting as a cruiserweight against Aaron Bartlett tonight. And Beaton really wants to make a statement. It's important for him to win well in front of family and friends and supporters. And we're seeing him fight in New Zealand for the first time. Stay with us on One Sport. Monty Beaton live next. for Monty Beatham against Aaron Bartlett on Dodge Fight Night. And there is David Tua offering some last-minute advice, no doubt, helping Beatham with this experience, with his experience. I just wonder if Tua is going to walk out with Beatham. The fans here would certainly love that. And interesting to see what the fighters go through as they wait for their turn in the ring. Beatham knows there have been critics of his decision to take this on, and he knows that he has to do more than win tonight to prove those critics wrong. But it's been quite a transition from rugby league player to boxer, and that is where Daniel Cobling comes in. The main changes with Monty going from a league player to a boxer was um, just changing his body shape, changing his, um, I mean, league is, is a collision sport, so you're supposed to carry that extra sheen of fat and stuff like that to take the tackles, but in boxing, uh, any excess weight carried is just, it's useless. If you were to ask me what kind of a fighter Monty is, brawler, boxer, I'd like to say both. Um, when, he, when he first got to me, I'd like to think that he was bouncing around on his toes like a boxer would, you know, very light-footed and fast hands. And then when I was teaching him, more tools and how to get in and how to work, um, the times to get in and stuff like that. We, we, he went for a period of um, 
definitely being Tarzan a bit in training and just wanting to get in there and ball a bit. So uh, I think we've, he's taken the best of both worlds and I'd like to think that he's uh, a bit of both, definitely, a boxer and a baller. Interesting to hear how you go about changing from one sport to another. There is Monty Beetham, David Tua there as well. Beetham looks cut, he looks fit. Let's see how the stats stack up. Well, this is the one we've been waiting for. Monty Beetham is the younger. He is also the shorter by one centimetre. Seven kilos heavier. 88 to 81 is Monty Beetham over Aaron Bartlett. The reach goes the way of Bartlett by some three centimetres. Also, the experience goes the way of Aaron Bartlett, although both men have had an equal number of wins, two each in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our cruiserweight match. It is six three-minute rounds. Please welcome in the blue corner from Whangarei Boxing, three years as a professional boxer, Aaron Bartlett. <laughs> Centering. What a big ask it is here for night taking on a legend in the form of Monty Beetham. But can Aaron Bartlett prove to be a legend killer? Man from Honorai here in Auckland, a light heavyweight, 36 years old. He's had more fights than Monty Beetham, but only two wins to his career, Mike. Well, yeah, he's not a credential fighter. He's, he's a guy that Monty Beatham is expected to do well against. Of course, it's the type of fight he needs early on in his career to build up that experience. And don't forget, Monty Beatham will be under huge pressure Racing to put on a good show in front of his home crowd for the first time. Son of a Commonwealth boxing champion, a Warriors and Kiwis legend. He's had two stoppages from two fights. Put it together for Monty The strains of Bon Jovi, it's my life. And tonight is the night for Monty Beetham Jr. Monty Beetham Sr. leads his son to centering. What a moment to see the former Warriors captain in Kiwi League International fighting in New Zealand for the first time. He is 2-0, Monty Beetham. His first fight was in Samoa. A Daniel Codling talking about changes to his body shape. You can already see Monty Beethan has stripped down even further. Just 88 kilos, Mike. Final instructions on the water down in the corner. And have a look at him, Monty Beethan. He has ripped, stripped and striated. More muscles than a seafood buffet. On the former Warriors captain. And I'll tell you what, Mike, just gonna have to hold we are I'm sold out here at the Sky City Casino, but they only needed to sell to the edge this, of the seats because right? that's what everyone's on right. in anticipation for this fight. Well, there's huge pressure on, on Monty tonight to put on a great performance. As we look in the crowds, of course, ex-Warrior, he's still involved with Warriors management and coaching, Tony Edel. And I need, I need, I need some, some tape, please. Well, Monty Beetham, who continues a proud tradition of rugby way. stars who have moved to pro boxing, the likes of WBA World Middleweight Champion Anthony Mundine, Solomon Hormono, and John Hopawati, all former hand. rugby stars who have now moved to boxing. It's not an easy transition to make, and you've got to be super talented to be able to do it with any success. Well, there are a few leagues punctuated throughout the crowd. Matthew Ridge, former Kiwi captain, and he's got a uh, former football player alongside of him, Noah Hickey, former All-White, just retired, of course. And Danny Codling just getting inside his man's head early, keeping him relaxed. And what I'm liking with Monty now, shoulders relaxed, he's focused, he's listening, he's not missing out on anything, the pressure isn't getting to him.